Then the ribs would be hacked from the spine one by one with an axe. <laughs> I think I speak for everybody when I say what the fuck? The Vikings were some of the most savage warriors in human history, but how savage were they really? Today we're gonna find out if it's actually true or if it's all just a bunch of myth. All right, let's go. Number 10, magic mushrooms. The Vikings were the we're most starting dominant with drugs. fighting force in Europe between the Love late drugs. 8th century and the mid 11th century. One huge advantage the okay. Vikings had over the people they invaded. Okay, how did, wait, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we get into the big advantage that they have, how did they film the fight? Yeah, dude, like, how is this on camera? I'm pretty sure they didn't have camera. Anyway, let, let's just... That when they went into battle, they would enter into a trance-like state called Berserker. In this state, oh. they would indiscriminately Bro. butcher anyone who got in their way. I just can't believe Vikings wore sweatpants from H&M. That's actually impressive. One theory published as to how the Vikings entered these berserk estates is that okay. they ate psilocybin mushrooms. Oh, love those these go on the salad, known right? magic mushrooms. First reported in the American Journal of Psychiatry, the theory is that the mushrooms, which grew in the area where oh. the Vikings lived, caused them to have hallucinations. Okay, it also increased it's lit. their adrenaline levels, causing the berserk estate. So you're telling me the Vikings did f drugs before they went into a battle so my boy ragnar and eric were chilling on their boat just like yo pass the weed sorry bro we're out of weed but i got this fungus that i found over on the ground at the last stop well hell yeah brother how else are we gonna kill all those children let's check Number the next nine, one viking soup since viking bloody soup? and violent skirmishes Yummy. were part of viking life viking women became pretty knowledgeable about battle wounds okay so wait a minute i'm afraid to ask but what does battle wounds have to do with soup i have a feeling they're gonna put their fucking mushrooms in it aren't they specifically viking women had a way to gauge how bad a stab or slash wound was okay they would feed the injured warrior a broth that had onions leeks and herbs Yummy. after eating it the women would smell the wound if they smelled the broth they knew the wound was too deep and there was no way to fix it <coughs> Bro, what the f did I just hear? So you're telling me my man's standing there holding his fucking kidney into his torso and they pass him a soup and he goes, mm. and then the nurse just gets in there and starts, <laughs> oh yeah, that shit smells like onions. You're fucked. It's smart, but it's gross. With death coming soon, the women would do nothing to help the dying warrior. They would focus their time and use their remedies only on warriors. That's called min maxing. Number eight, swords. Swords. Used I love how my man said that. He just goes swords. Like fuck yeah, bro. I love swords. Let's talk about a swords. Number of different weapons like long axes and spears. True. Even their shields were used as offensive weapons. C However, their most prized weapons were their long swords. What is he the stabbing? Vikings is that a... name their swords things like Widowmaker and Corpse Bramble, and the swords would be passed what? down from generation to generation. Okay. As Viking boys grew up, their fathers would talk about all the men who died by the sword. Imagine little Bjorn hanging out in the living room when his dad comes home from war, and he's like, oh. Daddy, can I play with your sword? And he's like, yes, son. Actually, I was thinking, it's about time that you had yourself one of these. And he's playing with in the backyard. And he's like, Daddy, I got a question. Why does this thing smell like it's covered in onions? This helped pass along their family history and instill the idea of nobility. You could write it down, up. but... The swords were double-edged and sharp enough to cut through a human skull or cut off a limb with one slice. The men carried their swords at all times, usually on their back, and slept beside them. No way! They were way. expected to be able to defend their homes, their families, and help defend their leaders and their leaders' property. So the swords were sharp enough to cut through a skull or cut off an entire limb with a single blow, and fucking Eric was just sleeping with it in his bed, probably with his wife right next to him. Oh, sleep well, honey, and remember, if you take the blanket one more time, I'll cut your fucking arm off. Number seven, home gang. The Viking Home justice gang? system is rather different than the laws of today. Okay. Notably, insulting someone of a higher class was off limits, but killing someone wasn't always illegal. For example, if someone was murdered, then their family could kill the murderer. Of course, oh. this led to long-lasting back-and-forth blood feuds. <laughs> Dude, I love how simple that is. He's like, yeah, that dude's more rich than you, so you can't kill him. But if he kills your father, then fuck him. You can kill him back and forth, and your family can exchange a feud for pretty much the rest of time. Who gives a shit? Another way of settling disputes was Holm Gangs. No way Holm, Holm Gang. Gang wasn't a band of ruffians who were big fans of the actor Ian Holm. They were fights, uh, sometimes to the death. Who the it was essentially a duel with one person challenging another oh. he felt had wronged him. Okay. It was to be held within the week of the challenge, and someone could volunteer to fight in place of the person who was challenged. 
How the hell is that fair? That's fucking OP as hell. Imagine you're beefing with your next door neighbor because he keeps pissing on your crops. So you challenge him to a duel and he just goes out there and hires somebody who's fucking six, seven and bench presses 400. And you show up to the duel a week later, like, oh, hey, I forgot I left my shit at home. I gotta go. I got. If the person who was challenged didn't show up for the duel, they were automatically deemed guilty. If the charge was bad enough, then anyone from any social class would legally be able to kill that person. What? This no way. No way. Dude, imagine you just had like food poisoning or something that day. You just couldn't show up and everybody in town's just like, oh, fucking Eric's guilty, guys. Let's go get him. This meant that if the leader of the clan didn't show up for a duel, the slave could kill him without any legal repercussions. Nice. Number six, games. The Vikings <laughs> love this dude's the best part of the video. He just goes games. Man, I love games. Cheers. The Vikings loved violence, so it shouldn't be a surprise that their games make UFC look like the ballet. Okay. In Viking games, death and serious injuries were common. The rule was that How men was that could a game? stop playing whenever they wanted, so if they got killed, it was their own fault. If you die, you're a p One game they played was a swimming competition, okay. and we mean that term very loosely. The point of the game was for the men to hold an opponent underwater for as long as he could. If the man couldn't reach the surface, oh, oh, well, he drowned. What the f***? How is that a game that's literally just fucking murdering somebody by drowning them? Hey, Timmy, you want to come over and swim in the lake? I appreciate the invite, Eric, but last week you invited my brother over to play games in your pond and you fucking drowned him. If the games themselves weren't dangerous enough, fights and brawls could erupt at any time. In one account, a six-year-old boy drove an axe into the head of another boy because he was roughed up by the boy <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Number five. And these days, kids get called fat on Twitter and have to see a therapist for a year. But back then, if you step on Bjorn's shoes, he's going to invite you to play a game called Axe in the Fucking Skull. And he's only six. Number five, infanticide. Since the Vikings lived in the Nordic area of Europe, where conditions can be incredibly harsh and violence was a part of their everyday life, Clearly. they wanted their children to be strong. Okay. In Viking culture, everyone, including children, were expected to work. If an okay. infant was born with a deformity or something else was wrong, they were often placed outside and died from exposure. <laughs> Bro, he said they get put outside like they're a pair of wet work boots. Yeah, hey, honey, it turns out that our son Bjorn just has a really fucked up eye. I'm just going to put him outside. Is that cool? Oh, yeah. No, we'll just leave him out there till he just disappears. It's fine. That's some savage ass shit right there. Number four, sexual slavery. It is believed that the Viking mm. Age started in 793 AD when raiders, probably from Norway, attacked the Lindisfarne Monastery off the coast of northeastern okay. England. I'm just going to pause here and say I'm a bit uncomfortable with this topic, so let's just proceed with caution. The Vikings continued to raid villages and monasteries along the European coast until okay. 1066. As they did. However, researchers were never really sure why the Vikings began their raids. One theory is that Viking Mushrooms? men may have wanted women because of an upset in the male to female ratio thanks to gender selective infanticide. Oh. Okay, so the Viking boats were just big sausage parties. Pretty much nothing has changed. If you ever been to a frat party, it's just a bunch of dudes getting violent, throwing around the football. And sometimes shrooms are even involved then as well. It turns out men have pretty much never changed. That's great. This has led some researchers to believe that the main reason Viking men started invading different areas in Europe wasn't pillage. Instead, they were focusing on kidnapping women to be their wives. Number three, Eric the Red was too violent for the Vikings. The Vikings How were fierce and dedicated warriors that were known for their brutality, and True. somehow Eric Torvaldsen was too violent for them. Torvald. Better known as Eric the Red, he was born in Norway sometime around 950. When Eric okay. was a child, his father was exiled over a murder and his family was sent to Iceland. Uh, okay. Why was he exiled for murder? Everything we've learned up until now pretty much implies that they find murder relatively chill, so what's the big deal? This would become a theme for Eric. Eric gained his famous nickname because of his red hair and the fact that he was a volatile and violent man. Badass. Around 980, Eric's servants triggered a landslide, destroying a neighbor's house. How the, the f How do you trigger a landslide on purpose? Those must be some chonky boys. A kinsman of the man, Eof the Foul, killed the servants in retaliation. Infuriated, Eric okay. killed Eof and an enforcer of his clan. Eric okay. was banished. Eric and his what? family moved. What the f I thought the previous rule was that if you kill someone, they can kill something back on you, and then if you won, you could kill them back. I don't know. I lost track. It doesn't make sense. They set up a farm on the island of Oxney. A new neighbor called Trefren the Dueler, who was building his home, asked okay. Eric if he could borrow some wooden beams. Eric agreed, but when he went to get them back, the neighbor refused to return them. A brawl ensued, and two of the neighbor's sons and a few of his friends were killed. Okay. Eric was once again banished. <laughs> Eric and his family. He's uh, not too great at integrating into society, okay? Also, he's killed two 
two of his neighbors at this point, so he's got a pretty terrible track record. Kinda sounds like he's from the sketchy part of Queens, you know? Eric and his family settled in Greenland, becoming the first people to do so. After his banishment ended, he returned to Iceland and encouraged people to move to Greenland. Okay. Two colonies were established, and Eric lived out the rest of his days there. Wait, isn't Greenland the one that's actually covered in ice? And also, how was he considered too violent if he only killed two people? It's not a big deal. You're Vikings. You guys kill people for fun, I thought. Right? They're all games. It's fun and games. Number two child sacrifices Ooh, oof. and here i was thinking how could it possibly get more fucked up there were rumors that vikings committed human sacrifices okay however the monks responsible for those writings never saw the actual ceremony the writings have often been dismissed as propaganda okay on the other hand there are writings from the vikings that say that humans are the ultimate sacrifice and odin supposedly demanded it shout out however, to odin there was no concrete evidence that vikings performed human sacrifices oh, okay. until 2011. oh wait what he really had me in the first half of that sentence there he's like well there was no evidence of them ever sacrificing people until 2011 when it's actually true this finding also helps substantiate an earlier theory regarding the discovery of children's bones found in a well it's believed that children were sacrificed in extreme cases when the Vikings were hoping to reconnect with the gods. Hey God, can you hear me? Yes. Why don't we talk anymore? Because you haven't killed your son. Number one, Blood Eagle. The Vikings Bloody. supposedly had a rather gruesome form of execution called the Blood Eagle. This is a formal warning. If you are under the age of 18, I highly recommend not continuing the video. And it appears that it was reserved for royalty. The victim was tied face down, then the Ooh, real fun kinky. began. The shape hey. of an eagle with outstretched wings would be carved into the man's back, then oh. the ribs would be hacked from the spine one by one with an axe. <laughs> I think I speak for everybody when I say what the f Once that was done, the bones and skin were pulled back to make the victim's back look like wings. Supposedly, this was done while the victim was still alive, which was important for oh. the next stage when salt was rubbed into the wounds oh. on the back. To end it all, the lungs were pulled out through the back. Witnesses could watch the lungs exhale their last breath, making it look like the wings were fluttering. <laughs> what the f***? What the actual f***? How did it get worse than child sacrifice? How did it get a thousand times worse than child sacrifice? So they would take an axe to the back of your rib cage and then pull your ribs out of your back so that way it looked like wings that were fluttering as you inhaled and exhaled still alive. Again. What the literal fuck? The Vikings depicted the execution in their artwork and according to their writings- it Oh, so artistic. Twice. However, modern day researchers are unsure if the Blood Eagle was actually performed or Phew. if it was just a metaphor for what the executed went through. Oh, thank God. Just, I'm just gonna pretend like it's not real. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining, funny, informative, whatever the case is, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. Of course, the link to the original video will be in the description below as well as the pinned comment. Make sure you go over there and subscribe to that channel, like the video. Top 10s is a great channel and you won't regret it. If you guys wanna start your own Viking civilization, make sure you guys click the link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms with a program called Blue Stacks. It's my favorite way to play the game. And honestly, it's the best war strategy game I've ever played on mobile. So click the link below, give it a try. And hey, you can always uninstall it later. As always, my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, all that stuff. It's always down below. Comment down below if you were surprised by how actually horrifying these facts were. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace. You know the drill. Don't tell me you forgot your cold one. How are you gonna crack a cold one with the boys? Oh, okay. I'm glad you paused it and went and got a drink. Cheers. <sighs>